So, um, hi everyone. Uh, Samir is here with Vox Implant, and thank you for joining us today. Um, I see that people are still coming here, so uh, I suggest that we can wait for uh, one or two minutes so uh, everybody will, will come here. And please, for those who've joined us right now, uh, could you please tell me if you can hear me and see me well? I'll really appreciate that. Yep, great. Uh, if not, please uh, tell us that also so uh, my colleagues will help us uh, to fix some issues if there are any. So uh, yeah, we will wait one or two minutes more and then we will start. But before we start, I just want to tell you that um, uh, <clears throat> during my presentation, you might have some questions uh, that you would like to ask and I'll really appreciate if you will do that. However, um, do mention that if you have any questions, please uh, let me know in the chat so you can easily um, write down your question and let us know about it. So after the presentation, I'll be glad to answer on all of them. And uh, some of the questions are probably, or maybe will be answered during the presentation because I have my colleagues here and we actually work in tandem. So uh, Alona is in my tandem, so uh, she will help me with questions if you will have some during the presentation. So yeah, here we go, Alona is here. So please let us know. However, if you will also have some questions that you might want to ask me after the presentation, or if you would like to have another session with me and my colleague Alona, we'll be happy to do that. So um, after this presentation, or maybe during the presentation, you will see the feedback form or the form question form. So you can fill it in. Yeah, here we go. You can fill it in. You can ask any question, uh, whether it's complicated or not. And after the session, I'll make sure to contact you guys and uh, I'll make sure to answer all of these questions and we will we'll have a demos or maybe more sessions with you. But now uh, I just want to, again, thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, please uh, put pluses if you can hear me and see me well. Unfortunately, I'm after my uh, sick leave. Uh, so I might cough during the presentation and I want to uh, apologize for it in advance. However, I promise that uh, I will not do that um, really loudly and I'll probably do that uh, not into the microphone. So, yep, sorry about that as well. So I can see that we have more people right now and uh, I'll probably give them one more minute. And please, for those who just joined us, um, could you please let me know if you can hear me and see me well? It's really important because I want to make sure that all of you guys can can see the proper can see properly the presentation and can properly hear me. Yep. Hi, Karin. Perfect. Yep. So. Yep. Hi, Daria. Yeah. So I agree with Elona. So let's start. So, uh, guys, uh, today's presentation is about the communication of uh, it's about the communication. Uh, strategies of uh, food and on-demand delivery industry. And I will show you some of the trends and factors that affect the industry. So uh, my name is Samir Ahmed, and I work for the company for Vox Implant for the last three years. And for the last year, I was mainly uh, focused on the on-demand delivery industry and companies. So for the last three years, I have communicated with more than 50 companies both tier one, tier two. And um, we had a chat about their current communication strategy, uh, about their business objectives and uh, how and at what extent they want to change the strategy itself in order to keep up with the, with the industry. So um, today I will show you and tell you about the solutions uh, that are quite popular at the moment due to the some uh, trends that occur on the market and due to the, some factors on the market that affects it. Uh, also, I will tell you about market reaction and about challenges that appears, about solutions that we have. Um, some of them we, are, we have already implemented and some of them are on the production stage. Then I will jump into the conclusion and Q&A session. So again, the goal of the presentation is to give you a general information about how market reacts on current trends. Um, 
I will also tell you how to optimize and automate communication in between all the participants involved. So they are customers. Uh, basically, those are the partners who are restaurants and stores, also your supper teams and the uh, couriers. So um, yeah, let's start. But before I jump into the theoretical part of this presentation, I just want to share uh, some of the catchphrases that I hear mostly during the first calls, especially if, it's a, if it is a discovery call with a client. So uh, usually uh, people uh, telling me that Samir, our internally made platform is perfect. Everything works fine and great. And our customers are totally satisfied with that. And usually it brings my curiosity in because I always want to know about the technologies and know-hows that other companies are using to keep their customers loyal. However, usually 90% um, when, when and if we dig deeper into their communication strategies and platforms, um, we usually see that some of their uh, some of the parts of those platforms and communication strategy could be and should be uh, improved in order to keep the LTV of their customers high, reduce charms, and in some cases increase uh, agents' productivity on the contact center. And um, this statement is um, uh, could be supported by, by some researches and uh, by some um, secondary, secondary researches that we've made. So for example, we've uh, I've read the research by Bain and Company, and they had a great statement saying that in the in the industry, in the food and on-demand delivery industry, 80% of the companies think that their customers are totally satisfied with their product, with their platform or um, application, and with their, with their customer support. But after Bain made their primary research, they found out that only 8% of the customers agree with the statement. So it shows the great misunderstanding in between them. It shows the communication gap. Uh, and most of the companies don't really know if the customer is satisfied and why the customer is dissatisfied. So today I will try to show you uh, some of the factors that affect this misunderstanding and communication gap. And also I will show you some of the solutions that uh, could bridge the gap. So uh, to make it much easier for you guys, I've divided those factors and trends into uh, four groups. And those groups are economic group, technical group, uh, legal group, and social one. And I would like to start with social one because we, we're receiving a lot of cases right now when companies um, have more, more um, I would say, new niches that are adding into the um, market. So they have to satisfy those niches as well. And there are two niches that I would like to uh, talk about today. The first one are elder people uh, or people who are not used to this application buying process. Those people are used to brick and mortar type of buying process. And for some of them, um, you know, registering in the application, filling in blanks, boxes, is a bit difficult. All of us has uh, elder relatives, myself, to some of them are even asking me like, hey, Samir, could you please order the groceries for us? And they send me the list and then I fill in the form and I order the food for them. However, for uh, the last couple of months, one of my colleague, Victoria, she came up with this brilliant idea and the case is already uh, on air with one of the Eastern European um, companies. So what she came up with, she came up with this great idea of building an AI powered bot that is able to process the calls from elder people or anybody who is not able to uh, use an application. Uh, so what they can do, they can give a call uh, to a bot, uh, tell a bot what he or she uh, wants to buy. Uh, then a bot asks and check the list if it was, um, if it was um, uh, taken in the right way. And if customer agrees, then the order is passed to a partner side. So no human involved in the process. The bot is able to collect all of the food, so it's automated. And then after the person on the spot or a courier uh, combine the list, combine the orders, uh, the orders are delivered by one of the couriers. And it's great because, you know, um, different 
different clients, they have their own needs and wants, and uh, they prefer to be contacted in a certain way. So we make sure that it happens for our clients as well. Another group or another niche who have been on the market for a long time, but they're truly activated right now, are people who prefer healthy food and the, or people who have their own buying habits. And I can see myself as one of those people because I have my own buying, um, buying habits. For example, I know uh, that some of the um, groceries, they put the uh, most freshest, the freshest food and the freshest milk on the back of the shelves so they can get rid of the uh, old stocks first. And due to the fact that I know that, I usually dig deeper in, onto the shelves to, to find the right milk with the best expiry date and I purchase it. Also, uh, I can spend 10 plus minutes on the veggie stands just to picking up the right veggies. And uh, due to the fact that due to the COVID, we have to sit at home and the only way one of the ways we can uh, order the food are within the application. Sometimes we lose control over uh, our buying habits. And um, it is quite a challenge for, for some of the companies because uh, obviously people and companies are trying to, um, to deliver the best possible fruits and uh, products. However, sometimes due to the fact that there is a lack of timing and custom, uh, couriers, I'm sorry, they have to deliver a lot of orders within a day they're in a hurry so they're not able to check if the milk is not expired is not spoiled and if the order was um, combined in the right way or the veggies are quite good so it is a problem for companies because they either give a refund back usually they do, they do that because they don't have the resources or agents who have time to spend time on um on those tickets so they do um help customers with the refund. Or for example, if there was a missing item, they uh, assign automatically a new driver who will go back to the store and bring the right, uh, the right item to a customer. But there are ways to automate and kinda, I would say, optimize the process. For example, there is a solution that is in the production mode right now. So what we did, we've created a peer-to-peer -peer calling uh, video button inside the application. So we gave an opportunity to a customer to give a courier a call and vice versa. So they will have an ability to have a video call and the customer will be able to choose the right veggies or choose the right fruits, milk, eggs, etc. So we give your customer a control over his or her buying process. And it is good because uh, Later on, if you will make a re record of such uh, communication, you can use it, for example, for uh, teaching purposes. You can teach new couriers on how to pick up the right food uh, remotely. And moreover, if there are some issues with customers, you can also check if and what went wrong during this conversation. So you can clearly see that there are new channels of communications that is adding to the value chain or, or the process. So it is really important, on the other hand, uh, to see if there are no um, problems from the legal stand of point. So for example, there are no breaches of the contact base or customer sensitive information, uh, et cetera. So another factor is the fact is, is uh, the, the point is that companies have to make sure that the data is protected and secured. So all of us, whether if we are not from the if, if we are from the industry or outside the industry, we heard about uh, the cases when, for example, a company's uh, database was breached, and uh, the contact information of all of the customers were uh, were out there on the dark net, and everybody can get get an access to it. And it is crucial to protect such data. And we also have cases that can do so. I will tell you about later on. Another case that happened uh, that happens all the time and actually happened on with one the, one of the biggest uh, Eastern European player on the market is the cases when the couriers start texting people. Uh, the couriers start te texting people, and moreover, there are cases when they are telling inappropriate things to to the people. So there were some cases this week and last week when the courier tried to contact people uh, after the order is done. 
and we also have case uh, we also have solutions that can help you to overcome such issues so um uh, getting back to the first issue which is the security issue uh we do have an ability to collect information or sensitive data with a bot. Uh, so no human being will be involved in the process and uh, the human factor will be reduced. And due to the fact, the information will be um, in the safe place. And me personally, I had a situation with one, with one uh, UK provider. I've spent around five years in the UK. And back in 2015, there was a trend when companies were trying to um, to um, onboard new local stores, small stores to their aggregators application. And the issue was is that the amount of frauds have been increased as well. And to overcome those frauds, companies uh, and partners themselves, they were given a call to a person who have made an order and they were asking if the, that is true that the person have been made an order recently. And uh, for those who were the new customers, it was usually they were not allowed to pay with cash. However, ag sometimes aggregators didn't mention that. So people have to have to call customers and tell them that they have switched their uh, paying method. And they have to give uh, the, these people from, from the partner side uh, their credit card information. Uh, to uh, get their order, and that happens to me. So I had to give my information to a person via phone, and I gave both front side and back side information of my card. And if you, if you think about it, it's kind of crazy because if you have somebody sitting in the middle, he or she can can easily get this information and use it for per, for further uh, purposes. Uh, and uh, moreover, uh, for example, if somebody stole your information, he or she can easily give you a call telling you that he or she is a representative of the company asking you for your credit card details. However, our AI powered bots uh, can get rid of this human, human factor and collect the information, pass the information to the secure database, uh, and then the order will be um, stored and prepared and the driver will be assigned and you will get your order. Another case with the harassment, what we came up with, uh, with, a, with a solution that can um, mask your phone numbers. So uh, during the order, which is not done yet, uh, both customers and couriers get real, but um, real phone numbers, but those phone numbers are existed only during the order. But after the order is done, those phone numbers are deleted from the system and there are no ways the courier can contact the customer and vice versa. Same thing might happen with the chat. Some, some companies prefer chats. Same thing, we can create a secure, secure chats that um, will be uh, available only during the order. After the order is done, the chat is deleted. And um, it is really important. The security is really important because now we, we can see that more people are buying food online. And uh, the demands, the, the, the demand side have been shifted to the right side. And uh, if you think about it, uh, those factors, economic factors, uh, showing that more orders are out there, but still companies have the same amount of resources. And it means that the same amount of agents uh, will be processing doubled amounts of orders. And um, in this case, some of the companies have difficulties due to the fact that there are some general asking questions like, where is my order? Where's the courier? Or I forgot to order something, I want to change it. So your couriers, or, sorry, your agents have to spend their time on, on those tickets that could be automated. Uh, and in this case, uh, the, the automation is out there. Also, uh, uh, there was um, a trend before COVID-19. So we had a communication with the probably the biggest player in the market. And the challenge that they faced is the fact that uh, emerged markets are full of competition. They are full of different aggregators and it is hard for them to gain new market share. So the only way to involve and to expand their business is to go into the emerging markets, including BRICS, Africa, Latin America, uh, Australia, et cetera, Eastern Europe. However, after COVID-19, uh, they face some difficulties because uh, since their um, their orders from the emerged markets, which is which are U.S. and U.K. Um, sorry, U.S. and Europe, 
those demands have been doubled in some cases. So now they had to satisfy current customers first before they go uh, onto some uh, emerging markets. And uh, still with the same amount of resources, they have to process more, uh, more orders. That's why the automation is the key here. And again, we came up with this idea, which is not new on the market, but is used uh, more frequently right now. Uh, and the idea is to create an AI powered bot that is able uh, to outsource up to 80% of general tasks that your um, uh, contact center agents are doing or spending time on. Uh, and this bot is able to answer any, any question that customer might have because the bots are uh, also um, supported by um, Google's technology, IBM technology, Amazon. We are official partners and uh, we have probably the best um, natural language understanding and processing on the market. So those bots can easily answer even difficult questions. They can uh, fulfill the order or if something went wrong or a customer forgot uh, to order something, a bot can easily add that into, into the list itself. So uh, you can see that the, the demands have been shifted. So, so there were also some technical trends that helped companies to shift their supply a bit so they can um, satisfy new niches and keep the price as low as possible. So to do that, they've added new participants into the value chain. So um, there are dark kitchens and dark stores out there. And for those of you who are not familiar with those terms, dark kitchens or dark stores, basically those are the participants uh, or um, you can say part of an organization uh, that are closed for general customers. So general customer cannot go there and uh, order food on the spot. So those places, they receive orders that have been made online. They collect an order or they prefer, uh, pre prepare your food, I'm sorry. Then the driver is automatically assigned and they pass the food to this driver and he or she delivers your food. And the issue here is that all of the participants that you have, they might use different vendors for SMS, messaging, calling, etc. And the problem that might occur is that, for example, if something went wrong with one vendor, it will affect all your communication strategy. And to overcome the issue, uh, you should have a person from your side that will contact all the participants to, in order to fix an issue. So the trend that we see on the market and not only in the uh, on-demand delivery market, but also in banking um, market and financial markets is the fact that companies are trying to make one ecosystem. So they are trying to combine all of their different vendors in one place so they can track if something went wrong, they can easily back it up with some, some other platform. Or for example, if they want to have one platform that will satisfy all of their communications needs, there is such possibility because uh, companies like Vox Implant and C CPAS companies um, have the ability to provide such services. So for example, we as a CPAS, we have all types of communications available and uh, some of the solutions actually are not uh, requiring any coding skills at all. So you don't need to have any, any uh, developer on your site to, for example, create a simple bot or simple IVR to process some general requests. So you can see a trend for unification and um, there is a possibility to, to help you with, with creating one ecosystem for that. So now uh, is the conclusion part. And I would like to sum up everything that I've just said. So in order to um, compete on the market, if we are talking about the communication side, in order to satisfy your customer's needs in terms of the communication again, um, you have to understand what they want and the way they want to be communicated. Uh, also, you have to understand um, how you can protect their data due to the fact that there are more orders and more information going through your system. And it can easily affect because in, in the industry, bargaining power of your customers, bargaining power of your demand is quite high. So it means that they easily can switch from you guys to somebody else without any issues at all. 
And last but not least, you should make sure that your communications are unified in one ecosystem and you have a backup for any type of communication you have out there. So for example, if something goes wrong with your calling system, you can easily, easily support it with something else. So um, that is quite it. I've tried to make my best uh, uh, to give you uh, the information uh, in, in, in 20 to 25 minutes. Obviously, you might have some questions, and I really appreciate if you do so. So please uh, ask any question in the chat, and me and my colleagues will make sure to answer them right now. If there are some complex questions or if you have a particular use case that you want to share with me, please feel free to fill in questionnaire uh, that you can see on the top of the chat, uh, and I'll make sure to contact with you personally or one of my colleagues will contact you and we will have a session with you. And even if you have some particular case, you can tell me about it and we can even make some tailored made demonstration for you that and you will see how it will work in your case. So uh, guys, thank you very much for your attention and please ask questions if you have some. It looks like no one have one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. So uh, we do have some questions that are frequently asked. For example, some of the customers are afraid that their current systems, or for example, their CRM, they're not sure if uh, we can be integrated into those third party systems. And the quick answer is, Yes, we can be integrated into any types of the system, but if the system has an open API and allows third-party platforms to be integrated with them. So in order to answer uh, this question about the CRM system, you have to uh, ask your provider if it is possible uh, to uh, integrate them with the third-party system. And if they say yes, then the answer is yes, we can integrate with you guys. Also, um, some of the customers usually ask us about the uh, countries that we can call to. And uh, we, we, we do can call into a lot of a huge amount of countries. So um, Alona, please uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember that the number is 140 countries. And uh, even though if the country is not listed, um, Yes, yes, so it's 140. So we, we have a list of com countries on our website. So if you go on our webpage, which is voximplant.com, you can go to our pricing tab, tab I'm sorry, and um, you can see that there on the right side, there are some drop down menus and you can see what are the countries that we can call to. However, in some cases, the country might, might, might not be there, but still, we can call to them and to check that we, we first of all we have to know which which country we are talking about so then we can test if there is such technical possibility to do that so yeah so any other questions guys yeah. Looks like no one have any more questions. Again, if, yeah, great. So again, guys, if you have some complex questions or questions that you do not, you, you're not comfortable to share with everybody in this chat, please make sure to fill in the uh, questionnaire on the top of this chat and I will make sure to contact with you and we'll have one more session and I will describe everything we can do and I will describe all the solutions and share the expertise my own expertise and Alonis expertise with you. So uh, we will see how we can help and how we can fit. So um, yeah, it looks like it. Guys, thank you very much again for your attention. This is the end of my presentation and please feel free to contact me. You can see the details here on this slide. Please uh, email me or contact me via LinkedIn and I'll make sure to contact you. Thank you very much and have a great day. Bye.